uh, while he asked that, he actually uh, touched my arm, like in the very like seductive way. Lah. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Good Talk. I'm your host Sarah and we're joined by our friends today. So hi, I'm Justin. I'm a psychology undergraduate from NTU. So I'm Shaleen. I'm also an undergraduate, but I'm studying biomedical engineering in NUS. Hi, I'm Jonathan and I'm a circus artist. Yep. Alright, so today we'll be discussing about a very sensitive topic, which is sexual harassment or assault in Singapore. So to kick things off, I just wanted to ask you guys, what is sexual harassment or assault to you? Um, for me, I think like sexual harassment is when you feel uncomfortable, whether someone of the same gender or opposite gender does something to you. Yeah, I think the keyword is uncomfortable. But I think like it can be both gender. It doesn't have to be like a, the opposite gender. So initially, I thought that it could only be physical. But then it can it can also be like uh, visual or even like verbal in nature. I think that it is truly a place where someone is stepping into your personal boundary space as well as uh, making you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, so just like a FYI on the difference between sexual harassment and sexual assault. Sexual harassment actually includes many types of unwelcome verbal and physical um, sexual attention behaviour. While assault refers to sexual contact or behaviour, often physical, that occurs without the consent of the victim. Which leads us to the next question, which is to share an experience that was related to sexual harassment or sexual assault. Like currently, like, I'm doing food delivery. And I was going up a lift. So then there's this guy, and then he's asking me where I'm going, etc, etc. And then suddenly, like, he got a little friendly. Lah, so I usually, like, you know, when someone talks to me, they, they start to ask about order. So it's like, something like, okay, it's normal conversation, you know, like, in the lift. After we got out of the lift, he followed me. And then I'm like, okay, weird. Probably he's going another direction lah after that. But then, no, it didn't. So, like, when I went into the restaurant, like, he followed me in. And the staff saw me. And then, like, okay, pass. And then this guy was like, I'm, I'm with him. That's when I'm like, question mark. Like, why is he with me? I was like, wait, what are you doing? I, I turned around and asked him lah. And then he's like, uh, he didn't reply me. And I'm like, okay, let's just don't bother about him. And then he squeezed my butt. Like he groped my butt. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I was like shocked for like a few seconds. Lah. I was already like quite annoyed. Lah. So I'm like, I turned around and just said like, what are you doing? And then I, he, he just stared at me for a few, five seconds. And then he's like, chill brother, chill brother. And then he just walked away. And then like, me, baby, I'm, I'm like, Siow! I shouted la. And then like, all the delivery rider look at me and then like, say, what happened? And I said, this guy crazy was so, like, so I touched me and then, like, ran away. That guy was quite shocked la, I guess, but he left really quickly and then like, the rest of the delivery rider was like, wow, I thought what happened, but like, group body la. You know, that kind of thing. But yeah, so that's just a very minor incident that I kind of suddenly remember about la. Yeah, so I also had a similar experience. Uh, with a, with another man. I was taking the train back home. So I was just looking at my phone. And then this guy also came into the train. And then the first thing he asked me was, uh, boy, which secondary school are you from? So uh, while he asked that, he actually uh, touched my arm. Like in the very like seductive way. Lah. Then after that, I just, I said, no thank you. Then I just walked into another carriage. Shortly after that, like, I was still using my phone. Then suddenly I saw this person walk up to me and it's the same guy. Then he asked me the same question again. Then he said, what's your secondary school? Then he, then he did the same thing. So he touched my arm again. Then like, I was like, this time I was like quite stunned. So, and it quite, because it never happened to me before. So I continued to walk down to another carriage. For the third time, he actually approached me again. But this time he didn't, uh, he didn't touch my arm. Lah. So he, he just said goodbye. Then he got off at the next stop. Yeah, so it was quite weird. Um, to be frank, I, I felt that he, he might have been mentally unsound because from the way he spoke, the, from the way he behaved, like, I figured that there was, some, there was something a little bit off. Like. So I wasn't actually like too mad about it. 
but at the same time, I was uh, quite taken aback from the whole incident. Yeah. Throughout all the different jobs I have, right, I feel like almost every time there's something that happened that seems to be a sexual harassment to me, and then like I will always remember it because when I feel like I have no one to talk to or like to tell them like what happened, and then it's not like I can leave my workplace because of like the reputation you get after that. If you guys speak out, like how you know whether like the workplace will do something about it? Maybe they just give this person a warning, but then most probably you'll get fired. And then like yeah, I know like a lot of people they like to say like you're asking for it. We are not asking for it, obviously. Like why would we want someone to like touch us so inappropriately? Like for me, my experience when I was sixteen years old, uh, someone actually harassed me by. Swiping his hands across my butt a few times, and the part of time I was very innocent, so I always think, okay, it's just an accident. But then he would do it like a few times, to the point where I got very uncomfortable. So I, I just stepped away and I and I, but I didn't say anything. But till this very day, I still remember this memory. I still remember um, what happened during that, that that moment, and how it made me feel. You know. So I think that uh, sexual harassment should be taken seriously, especially if you're going through it. Which leads us to our next question: What are your thoughts on the recent spike of sexual harassment and sexual assault cases in Singapore? You know, at the top of my head, I think of the Nasi Lemak Telegram chat. The guys will share, send pictures of upskirt uh, photos of girls in public into that group. To me, I feel that that's very disgusting and very, very um, disrespectful to the opposite gender, especially the victims, because. It really damages the, the their self confidence and their identity, and it just there will be a lot of pain that they will need to heal from as well. If we were educated in when we were much younger on how to have better self control and how to have self respect towards the opposite gender, then we would have a better awareness on how, uh, how to deal with our needs and and stuff like that. Uh, I think to build on your point, uh, I'm not sure if there's more sexual harassment cases. Uh, now compared to before, but I think there's also, I think there's definitely more courage from the victims to speak up. So more people are taking it onto like social media or like Instagram story to share about their experiences, and um, I think this encourages less tolerance for such incidents, and it also encourages uh, people with similar experiences to speak up. So I guess that could contribute to the recent spike in sexual harassment cases. I agree with Justin. I feel like all this awareness of these sexual harassment cases are actually existing already, but it's actually brought to light by like probably the Me Too campaign, where you see celebrities do something, you feel like okay, since like such big shots are like talking about it, it's fine for us to like actually come out because we know that it's actually like a influential support to back this up. So I believe in the past there is more because like with our culture in Singapore, especially the Asian uh, kind of culture of, you know, like in the past, if you were to say like, this uncle did something to me or that uncle did something to me, the first thing that happened is you get a slap from your mother, you get a slap from this person because they say, hey, why you bring shame to our family? Why anyhow accuse people? But right now it's different. Singapore society has evolved. So that's why there, that, there's probably more courage for people to say. Yes, the V2 campaign and the whole how this society is really evolving and how people are really opening up and being courageous. I feel like that's a good step that we're taking to really uh, spread awareness on this topic, which is uh, very close to our hearts. Yeah. So we'll go on to the last question, which is how can we help victims of such cases? So like uh, recently, my duty's mom actually gave me this, um, I, will, I call it the pervert alarm. It's actually an alarm, right? And it's super loud. It like, when you pull the trigger, it's like a grenade, you know, you pull the pin, right? It will just sound out like the fire alarm. The whole floor can hear at that time. So if I feel like I'm harassed, right? I'll just pull it. So all the attention go to me. So like the harasser cannot like uh, go on with whatever action he, he plans to do to me. Yeah. So recently, I also learned some uh, self-defense. Such like self-defense, right? You can actually gives you a chance to like get away. Singapore should really like implement such uh, self-defense classes, especially like during the secondary school period where uh, students tend to get preyed on by all these like uh, 
much stronger than older perpetrators. Uh, this kind of thing is evolving and it's changing. I believe in another few more years, it'll get better. And like, people will start to realize like, okay, if they say no, it means no. You see, you see like right now, education campaign by like, you know, government or even like overseas, they always talk about consent. Education is very important, but like we must start from the young. If I go back to the case that I had, learning how to call for help. That's one thing we need to probably instill in everybody because every time when we think that uh, calling for help is a huge overreaction, probably it's something to do with this deep-seated thing about if we call for help means we are weak. But I, I don't think so. I think uh, it takes time for all this to you know grow up. I think it's important to realize that the whole uh, case about sexual harassment can be quite complex. It may not occur just because uh, like people are just horny. There can be like a lot of different uh, reasons behind it. It may be a bit hard to prevent such incidents from happening. Assuming such incidents already happen, I think one way that we can help fellow victims is to be there to listen to them and not be quick to judge. Rather than accusing them of the way they dress or like whether or not they were able to speak up for themselves, um, I think it's good to just listen to them and help them to find out the next best step to take. Thank you all for sharing and being vulnerable today. Uh, through this discussion, we've realised that everyone has different experiences and views on sexual harassment. And we want to remind everyone watching this right now that you are not alone. And, you know, I just want to encourage everyone as well watching this. Um, have courage. Take that step of courage to be open about what you're going through. And if you feel alone, know that there are many people here to help you. Share with us your takeaways from this episode down in the comment section below and let us know what topics you want us to discuss about next. This has been a good talk. Till next time. Bye! Bye.